So if you edit videos in Premiere Pro, you might be doing these keyframes or these animations the wrong way. Well, not really the wrong way, but there's a better way of doing these animations and these keyframes and the difference might be subtle, but it's really effective. But before we continue, happy 2024, happy new year. I hope you had a great holiday season and you had a lot of time to recharge, rest, and watch a bunch of Christmas movies, which I did. So let's jump straight into this tutorial. So normally what you would do in Premiere Pro if you're a beginner or even sometimes seasoned editors is that if you wanted to adjust the scale of a clip, you would do it at clip level here in video under the effect controls. So for example, you would set either a scale, a position or rotation keyframe here at the clip level. So I can set this keyframe here for scale and then go a little forward and adjust this to let's say 125. And this is what it looks like. And you might seem that you might think that there is nothing wrong with this, but let me show you what you can do instead. So if I were to have this animate over time, for example, a scale of this entire clip over time, the difference of what the difference in the method I'm going to show you might not make that big of a difference. But if you're doing a quick animation, like a quick zoom in or a quick rotation, this is going to make a lot of difference and you'll see why in a second. So this is what it looks like, just animating this at clip level. So what we'll do is go ahead and hold Option or Alt on our keyboard and drag this clip just to duplicate it and come back to this clip and we'll delete these keyframes. What we'll do now is look for the transform effect and add it to this clip. So what we'll do now is instead of doing that scale animation under motion here under the video clip, we're going to be doing that under the transform effect. So let's turn on the keyframe for scale and animate it to let's say 125. And if it's over time, the difference isn't that big. So it looks pretty much exactly the same as the other one when we animated that scale under the motion effect under the video clip. But now what I want to do, let's bring this all the way to the beginning. We will uncheck the use compos composition shutter angle button here and we'll change that shutter angle to about 150 or 180. Usually 150 does the trick. Right click on the first keyframe, add an easy ease in and go to the second clip, ease out. So what you'll notice now is that there is a slight motion blur and it looks a lot nicer than having that other clip without the motion blur. So this is what this effect creates when you uncheck the use composition shutter angle and you change that shutter angle to about 150 or 180. So let's change it to 180 and let's bring this a little closer and this will be a bit, a bit more pronounced. So you can see that it's a nicer zoom in with that motion blur. It just makes it look much better than the original version. I have a few more things to show you, but before we continue, make sure you hit the like button if you're enjoying this video so far. And if you are new here and haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button for future videos from me in regards to filmmaking, video editing, and gear for photography and video. So back into this. So this is what the clip looks like now with that zoom in motion blur. And this is what the other clip looked like without that zoom. So here's one thing as well that I did to save me time is I like to save that transform effect with the composition, shutter angle, check mark unchecked and a shutter, custom shutter angle included, usually 180. So let me first delete these scale keyframes and this is already good. So what I do is save this as a preset. So next time I'm doing this again, I don't have to go in and check that and add the shutter angle. All I need to do is go to my effect panels and here's the one I have, transform with motion blur. I add it into my clip. So this was the old one, let me delete that. But I add it into my clip and here it is, use composition shutter angle unchecked and shutter angle 180 degrees. I'll also include this as a free preset if you just wanna download that free for you to use as well, link in the description below. 
So the next thing we can do is we can animate in graphics and text using the same idea. So I have this graphic of this gimbal. What I wanted to do is just drag it in, appear in the frame, maybe slide it from one side of the frame, maybe roughly there. Let's turn on this stopwatch for position over here, just to show you what it looks like without that transform effect. And let's go a little bit forward, maybe up to there, add another keyframe. And this is going to be where this ends. So now let's press this little arrow to go to the first keyframe and let's drag that position keyframe all the way to when that graphic disappears. So this is what it looks like. Let's make that a little faster. It's not too bad, but it can be much better. So let's duplicate this little graphic clip again. Let's move it to the side over here. So instead of doing that, let's turn this off. Now I can add in this transform with motion blur preset that I had already saved and go to the beginning of that graphic, turn on the stopwatch for position. Let's add a little bit of a rotation just for fun and go forward maybe four frames, one, two, three, four, maybe five, and then hit that stopwatch again for rotation and position. And then hit that arrow to go back and rotation. Let's do maybe about that and position will be outside of the frame. Now what we can do is select the first two keyframes, right click, easy out or easy ease out. Select the two clips or two keyframes in the, at the end, ease in. So this is now what that looks like. Let's put it on top of the clip again so you can see the difference. This is, okay, let's do this. So this is uh, what it looks like with that motion blur. Without the motion blur, that's what it looks like. So big, big difference. Another cool thing about using the transform effect is that you can make your own transitions and save them as presets so that you can use them later on. So let me show you how to do a very easy zoom in transition using this transform effect. So here now I have these two clips first clip and second clip. I'll just cut this short. So first thing you want to do is right click, new item, adjustment layer. Okay. Once that's saved, I have two here, but I'll delete that first one. I'll add this adjustment layer and bring it into my timeline. And let's go to the middle in between these two clips and go back five frames. So one, two, three, four, five. I've just used the arrow keys on my keyboard to do that. And let's trim that. And let's go back to the middle as well. Another trick you can do is hold shift and press the arrow key to the right or left if you wanna just jump ahead five frames at a time. And now from here, I'll do three frames going forward. One, two, three. And I can just uh, trim that clip here. Let's zoom in using the plus button and hit the C, oops, and hit the C key on your keyboard to enable the cut tool and go to the middle of that adjustment layer where the two clips meet and cut it. So what we'll do now is add that transform effect with motion blur that I created as a preset already. We'll add it to both clips or both adjustment layers. So going on to the first one, having this selected, let's turn on the keyframe for scale and move a little forward. We'll change that to 300. Uh, what we'll do now is drag this keyframe all the way to the end of that adjustment layer. Same thing again now is to make these keyframes a little smoother. So on the first one, right click, ease out. Second one, right click, right click ease in. Now we have the first part of this transition. This is what it looks like. It already looks not too bad, but there's something more we can do with the second adjustment layer. Move this timeline indicator a little forward, hit on that add keyframe button, and now we can go back. On the first keyframe, we'll have, let's say, maybe 150. 
you can do 200 or 300 and experiment with different values to see what that would look like for you. Now we have this and drag the second keyframe to the end. Again, we'll ease in or ease out that first keyframe and ease in that second keyframe. So now this is what it looks like with both of these combined. So much better, much nicer and that shutter angle of 180 degrees just makes it really look really nice. So now what you can do now to save these as presets, so in the future, you don't have to do all of that work again, just drag and drop into an adjustment layer, is just right click on this transform effect inside the adjustment layer. And this one, you can click save as preset, and we can name it maybe zoom in, in, because this is the first part of that transition. And in the description, you can add personal notes for yourself. So for example, you sit with adjustment layer that is five, five frames in duration. So that's an example. You can click OK and it'll save into your presets in the effects control panel or in the effects panel. So I had saved mine already, but let's first click on that second adjustment layer. Now click on that transform effect again and save preset. And here you can name it as zoom in transition. And this would be, for example, the out or the second part of the transition. You can add a little description as well. Click OK and you'll save that. So now what we'll do is show you how to quickly add those into your adjustment layer. So we'll go back to this first adjustment layer. Let's delete that transform effect click on that second adjustment layer. Let's delete this as well. And now in the effect controls panel, I have already uh, saved my preset. So I have the MS zoom in. This will just drag and drop onto the first adjustment layer. MS zoom out, out, which is the second part, will add to that second adjustment layer. And that's it. I didn't have to redo all the work again. This was really, really simple. Again, I'll be also including this, these two presets for this Zoom transition for free so that you can download. So find that link in the description below. And if you enjoy it, let me know. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. And before you go, here are a couple more videos that you might be interested in watching next.